Welcome to the Life's Best Medicine Podcast, where we are finding hope and healing one episode at a time. No appointment needed, no rubber gloves, and no coping. Just a healthy dose of life lessons to help equip you for this wild journey we call life. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for this episode. And, uh, you know, I want to start out and just say a big, huge thank you. Uh, there's some great people who've really helped out. I'm, I'm doing some some work up in, in Vacaville, California. And uh, it's an underserved community where people are, are really struggling financially and health-wise. We're seeing an epidemic of diabetes and and um, uh, health problems that, that are devastating, right? So, you know, when I saw their break room up at this company, Vacaville Fruit Company, a little shout out to them because they care about their employees and they're helping. I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm uh, consulting with them right now, trying to help out. Um, I, I felt overwhelmed. And so I looked at their break room and, they, you know, and I couldn't believe it. It's all, everything was garbage food. So these people who work hard all day and, and are sleep deprived and stressed, um, they're not getting good nutrition. So people are calling it sick. You start having other health problems losing people to diabetes complications. And so the owner of the company reached out to me and said, hey, I don't care what it costs. I want to help these people. Um, they got them continuous glucose monitors. They, they paid for labs and for them to, to go through my program. And you know, I, I reached out to some people in the community and said, hey, can we help? Because it takes a community. So who responded? Health code. You know, Dr. Ben Bickman, who is a, a hero of mine, said, hey, well, how can I help? I can lecture. I can come and do whatever. You know, let's get them some product and, and see what they can do. So Health Code Shakes helped out. Rosettes, who's the wife of my partner on the Low Carb MD podcast, um, she said, let me send some some snack, uh, you know, low carb snacks, uh, you know, cake mix where they could celebrate birthdays and have cookies and things like that. And of course, my sponsor here is Simply Snacking. Um, very proud. She sent them a ton of samples and I'm seeing their continuous glucose monitors staying flat. I'm seeing sugars go from 246 down to less than hundred consistently. And so I just wanted to give a shout out. I'm only sponsored by Simply Snacking, but everyone else jumped in to help. Um, uh, ben Bacchicchio, uh, 15 Minutes to Fitness, he jumped in and said, hey, I'll, I'll lecture him on exercise. I really want to help. So what I'm saying is all these great people are coming out of the woodwork and uh, wanting to help a community. And that's what it's going to take. We have to invest in other people. And that's what this podcast is about. And I feel very uh, passionate about that, you know, and I'm, I'm proud of these companies. And I want you to support these companies because they're giving, they're helping, they're like-minded. You know, Sue at Simply Snack and I talked to her and said, look, this is a small podcast. We're just getting it off the ground. It's going to be a net loss for you probably for a while, right? And she says, I believe in your cause. I believe in, in helping people. And so when you're combined with people like this, you can't fail. So I just want to give a shout out to those companies. Um, they didn't do it for me to talk on the podcast. No one even mentioned it. They said, how can I help? And I think if more of us are like that, we're going to be successful. We're going to do better and we're going to help more people. So thank you for listening and uh, thank you for your continued support. Hello and welcome back to the Life's Best Medicine Podcast. Today's one I'm excited about. This guy, I love what he stands for, what he's doing online and on Twitter. He's, he's lifted my spirits more than I can say, you know, and just uh, making reasonable comments. Aranda, welcome, man. You're going to have morning. to give me your last name because I'm going to butcher it. I can't even get my yeah, own last name right. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Lenskis, because this is a genuine honor and a privilege. And yeah, uh, like my kind of one of my countrymen, uh, sort of um, Navin Hetiarachi, I've got a, one of those awkward Sri Lankan names. So we all have uh, these very long surnames. So I'm Aranda Wickramasinghe, and it's an honor to be here. Oh, man, it's awesome to have you. And he's one of my favorites also. It was great to have him on. And man, you guys both have the same spirit of kindness and decency and all that stuff. So that's what this podcast is all about. Life's best medicine. Tell, tell people about your journey, like where you came from, where you're at now. And, you know, I know you've had quite a time of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, um, so I'm Sri Lankan, I was born in Sri Lanka, which is a beautiful country. And, uh, my heritage in terms of, um, my genetic heritage, heritage, at least in terms of my mother, father, we all are susceptible to type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes and cardiovascular disease all those types of things so um i had a bit of a shock uh, on friday the 23rd of august 2019 i got diagnosed as pre-diabetic 
uh, I was obese at the time. And uh, that really sort of was a crunch point in my life. And uh, my wonderful wife um, supported me all the way through uh, me really stumbling around and kind of really trying to find how do I live my life? Uh, because, you know, we, we just had a beautiful kind of baby boy who's two and a half now. And I thought I was really struggling to find how can I live my life? How can I be a good example to my son uh, and show him this is how you live? This is what a healthy, happy dad looks like. And I was so unhealthy and so unhappy. So um, so that's what, where my journey started, really. And uh, I discovered the one of the th things I discovered quite early on, as well as Dr. David Unwin and his wife, Jen Unwin, was uh, the Low Carb MD podcast, uh, listening to yourself, Dr. Lenskis, and uh, Dr. Tro Carlegian as well. Uh, and um, it really, really inspired me. Um, as well as all of the amazing information, it was the stories of people. For example, kind of, um, uh, there was one of the episodes, I think it's Paul, Paolo, I think. Oh, yeah, Paolo. Yeah, he had back yeah, in the also. Yeah, that was an amazing yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and feel free to call me Brian, man. It's way easier. Right. Brilliant. But, but you know, those stories that, I mean, the stuff Tro and I can ramble on. We could talk the science. We could talk about all this stuff. And yeah. but when people say, look, here's my life. Here's what happened. And I think that's what I love the story part of it. And that's why I love this is hearing, mm -hmm. okay, people have success. What's their life like? What? How has it changed? What's what's motivated yeah. them to take that step, you know? And it's an honor yeah, yeah. to hear that, that our, our podcast had some impact on you. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and Brian, I think it's much more, the science helps, absolutely. The science helps, but it's more than the science um, because people respond to stories and people uh, respond to having hope. Uh, and um, that's what really you give in abundance is hope uh because you know just hearing kind of ordinary people uh recovering and living living life uh, i mean that that's really really powerful and uh in terms of myself um i'm i would say i'm buddhist um I, i'm buddhist but i'm uh this might surprise you i'm a buddhist that regularly goes to church no, it doesn't surprise me. I think when you're seeking, yeah. you go, hey, let me go to where I'm fed, you know, and you're going to take nuggets. That's what I love is yeah. learning from all different cultures and faiths and beliefs and, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. because uh, my wife's Christian. I'm Buddhist and uh, we have this beautiful son. And uh, I actually said to my wife, um, it's important to me uh, that our son grows up knowing what faith is. And you can't know what faith is without being part of a community and seeing people. So, um, so yeah, we get, got married in a church uh, because I thought, um, you know, uh, my wife, your parents have always gone to church. Uh, they go to church every Sunday. Uh, they're heavily involved with the church as well. And, and you've been the, the church where we got married. Uh, she's been going to all her life. And I thought, we're getting married um let's celebrate that somewhere that is meaningful to you and your parents and uh, and you know uh, it was beautiful yeah yeah that, and it's awesome when you you know just learning from each other and learning from different experiences right yeah. so it had to be yeah. weird for you going to church at first and going this is kind of different than what i'm used to i know if i go to a catholic church for instance it's different uh -huh. than what i'm used to it's just a yeah. different approach and different uh, uh, uh yeah feeling you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, in Sri Lanka, obviously, you can go to go to Buddhist temples, mm -hmm. uh, and even here, actually, that th there are Buddhist temples. So we we will take our sons to son to a Buddhist temple that's close by. But um, um, you yeah, know, I love going to church because uh, for me, it's all about community and meeting people. And that what really comes through is how. Um, powerful faith is uh to heal yeah and i'm glad you bring that up because it's such a hard uh you know for me i think you heard me talking about this but when i would say anything about hope or faith on the low carb md podcast i would get like lit up for a few days on on twitter or wherever social media 
but yeah. they would say, prove your faith, prove this, prove this. And I'm like, I can't really prove it to you. I could just tell you a story. It's like your story, like other people's yeah. stories. Like, where do you go yeah. when everything gets bad? When, when you go through a, you know, a, a pandemic, like we're going through right now, like, yeah. where do you go to for your peace and your comfort and, and, you know, just taking that next step, you know, like someone like you, who's turned their life around, made your health better, but you know, even more important than the health is it's instilling in your kids you know, mm-hmm. what, ma- what values, what matters. You can have six pack abs and be a jerk to everyone. It doesn't, it doesn't get you yeah, in yeah. life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I love something that you've said really resonated with me was to, you said in one of your podcasts that um, if you're feeling comfortable in your chair in church, you're going to the wrong church because for me at least i don't think of faith isn't about just believing something it's about um it's an active process or constantly learning and because somebody who just knows kind of a particular text or whatever religion that we talk about if, if somebody just knows it off by heart and believes it word for word to me that's that's zealotry not faith because because faith for me involves actually questioning things, really questioning things and having doubts. And the, the process of having those questions and having those doubts and um, it gives you a deeper understanding of your faith, whatever that is, wherever in the world you are. And, and that, that to me is what faith is about, not just believing things, uh, you know, sort of like literally. Yeah, I think in living your life and getting out there and seeing how does this impact other people? Is it ever wrong to love other people and be kind and decent? And, yeah. you know, I've yeah. never regretted it. Even if people took advantage, I still don't regret it because you do the right thing and it works out ultimately, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's little bumps and in the road, yeah. Absolutely. So, and um, through, I guess, my recovery, um, I've just found well, a capacity I didn't know I had because, you know, the past eight months. uh, So I've been running a a type two diabetes and obesity remission group. Uh, So I thought, okay, who, who, you know, who who in their right mind is going to want to talk to this, you know, Sri Lankan guy who works in finance, uh, you know, who's got no medical degree, no medical qualifications, Uh, who's going to want to talk to this guy and I just thought okay I I think I know something that can help Uh, so so as part of the public health collaboration uh, UK charity kind of founded by Sam Felton and you know Dr David Unwin and Jen Unwin are also part of the public health collaboration I thought I'm just going to put it out there so I made a commitment to say okay so Every week, once a week, I'm going to run a Zoom-based support session on a weeknight to whoever wants to come. Uh, I'm going to do that for at at least a year. Um, And I just put it out there and I got a lot of responses. And so I've been running this group for, uh, so the last session that we had was session number 40. So week number 40. So what do I have to show for all this effort? because it it is it is a big time commitment um so there's two people in my group who have achieved drug-free type 2 diabetes remission it's amazing man yeah 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 Yeah, that's great that there's nothing better than that to see someone yeah because most people just don't realize the implications of that you know to know yeah i've seen the amputation i've seen the the blindness i've seen the horrible things that you let that go and what happens and yeah. And so, yeah, that's a, uh, it's an amazing yeah. thing. And to give someone hope. And I think that's what Dr. Unwin brings to the table is hope that, you know, I heard him talking about it first saying, Hey, I have hope that we can do this. It's not fanatical. It's not crazy. Can't yeah. be done, but it takes investment from us and for the patients. Yeah. 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 And, and that, that's why it's um, hard sometimes to see people like Dr. Unwin being attacked and criticized because um certainly early on in my low carb journey I, I became very very passionate i used to react to things on twitter and, and social media uh you know it used to affect me emotionally it used to affect me emotionally and i kind of jump onto all of the you know jump onto the bandwagon to kind of defend 
uh, Dr. Anu because he he got attacked by uh, quite a big major local newspaper here. Uh, yeah. you know about bananas of all things. Yeah, it's a great. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, it's funny. Just this weekend, I can't. I can't, uh, just this last week, this patient of mine, he his perfect sugars are perfect with his continuous glucose more than boom spike, and then yeah. he wrote on there the damn banana. <laughs> so he wrote right. afterwards. He said the banana did it. He goes, I used to eat four or five of them a day, thinking I was healthy. Put them in my shakes. Put them here and put them. You know. And so when you realize that, when Doctor Unwin saw that, and and for people who don't know, Doctor Unwin was a standard of care doctor and he was getting burned out ready to retire and then one of his ladies came in and said she didn't listen to him and lost a ton of weight and reversed her diabetes he said that's impossible but yeah. it turns out she was doing low carb cutting out her, she was eating what her grandma and her mom ate and they didn't have diabetes and so when he saw this he said this is interesting and instead of saying no you didn't do it right he started saying let's try that with other people and himself and and he and he started getting benefits because he listened to his patients and that gave him hope that he could give other people hope instead of saying no there's a chronic progressive disease there's no remission you're just going to die of this we just keep throwing drugs at you till you die and that's not a very hopeful uh position to be in yeah 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 because uh, because he he was actually getting really discouraged dr Dunman, because you know as a primary care physician um if you don't know about uh, type 2 diabetes remission everything just gets worse everything just gets worse and here's you know you know one of the things he, big things he talks about is uh, he was feeling almost depressed uh, as a primary care physician and uh, and now he actually looks forward to um you know that patients come in to see him because every time things get better people are happier they've got more energy they're living their their life um yeah yeah it's amazing yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, you, and you've done a good job of not being a zealot too, of looking at both sides saying, let me see where you're coming from and trying to understand that person too. And like yeah. for me, you know, I go, oh, I think some of the stuff we argue about is really not important in, in the fact of saying, okay, is it calories in, calories out? Whatever works. If my patient comes off insulin, if you want to say it's because of this, I don't care. As long as they're getting yeah. better and they, they're happy and they live a better life, you can say whatever you want to say. But I care about the end, end cause. I think we know the physiology of what's happening based on what we yeah. see. But, yeah. you know, I think it's very, you know, some people will just attack you. You know, anyone who attacks Dr. Unwin, who's the, one of the nicest people, the most kind, generous, honest people on earth, it's just amazing to you, to me. Yeah. And it really is. That's what struck me. As I could see me getting attacked or Tro getting attacked. But when you have yeah. decent, like Gary Fetke is one of the most decent, kind, quiet mm -hmm. guys in the world. Yeah. He got attacked. Yeah. Professor Noakes is the same. And he got attacked. You know, yeah. highly regarded, and 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 one thing that I realize is a lot of the attacks these guys got were from med students who've never treated a patient yet, but they read yeah. a book. It's like the kid who hasn't driven a car yet is the expert until they get on a snowy road in the middle of nowhere, you know, and the lights go out yeah. type thing, because it's yeah. dealing with the patients face to face and 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 this kind of power. Not that med students can't be brilliant. There's a lot of yeah. them out there, but when you attack people who've been there and seen it and they see what works you, you, instead of saying hey let's listen let's be humble and listen and see if it works if it doesn't you try to apply it doesn't then you switch to the next thing that works right yeah yeah and i think let's be humble and listen is such a key point because you can learn things from everyone you can learn things from everyone like you know recently on twitter you kind know, of you know there, there's sort of lane norton phd who's been kind of you know he's quite verbose and he, he wrote this article um attacking really uh somebody who i really admire because uh, i mean doc, dr jason fung more than anybody else in the world is who i credit with my recovery because you know i read his book the obesity code i read all of his books in fact you know kind of and um so Lay Norton PhD, so he, he wrote this whole article kind of uh, criticizing Dr. Dr. Um, you know, Dr. Fung. And, you know, wind the clock back a year ago, I would have got quite angry about that. But um, I responded and I tried to engage and, and to say, look, his patients are seeing benefit. He's helped so many people, uh, not just directly who kind of patients that are working with him, but people all over the world, like me, who've never even met him, uh, you know, never talked to him, but he's helped people. So, so what, 
and me also I was, pre- I was pre-diabetic and i thought if this guy's right i'm going to be really upset because everything i've been telling people everything i've known everything i've done to myself has yeah. been wrong <laughs> you know so yeah. yeah and so he's had a huge impact and 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 just to make the point i've yet to have someone come in and say you know lave lay norton saved my life every day yeah. i hear people saying that jason yeah. funk saved love and and i'm not being derogatory i'm just saying that's yeah, a yeah. fact. I mean, you know, so many people say, I never understood this till he said it in a way where I understood it. So that's yeah. his skill set. Of course, he's not going to be right on everything. And there's going to be things yeah. twisted because when you speak a lot, you're going to say something and say, well, I want to retract that one, maybe. But, yeah. you know, for, for the most part, scientifically, what I'm seeing clinically, what I'm seeing with continuous glucose monitor, laboratory results, patient improvement coming off meds, I, I, he's had a massive impact on the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but uh, sort of um, like I said a year ago, I would have got quite angry, but I didn't get angry. Um, I I kind of responded to see okay, can can I engage and can is there any common ground? And I actually ended up learning quite a lot from that exchange um, because everybody has something um, that they they can teach. And uh, one of the things I learned is that people who challenge us have served a really important purpose, which is exactly that, to, ja- to challenge us. And when we get challenged, um, we learn more and we have a deeper understanding of whatever it is that, um, that we value. Uh, so Absolutely, yeah. and that goes for religion too. I don't mind being challenged. I love to be challenged so I can understand what I believe. And I can yeah. say, well, let me see. Let me try what he's saying and see how, how that fits. Because there's no doubt Lane Norton has success in his group, right? He does have, he wouldn't be around. So clearly yeah. he's doing something right. Clearly yeah, yeah. Jason Fung is doing something right. What I'm saying is, look, we don't have to fight with each other. Say, so let me learn from what you're doing. It's a, yeah. you know, uh, you know, Lane and I had a little interaction because he was putting up pictures of clowns and saying, this is, and, and, and they started this Ben Y. I, I don't like that anyway. Even if it's someone I really right. don't like, I don't like yeah. that. I don't like just piling on someone. Yeah. Well, for the most part, there's a couple of people who probably deserve it, but, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, I don't like the wolf mentality where you, uh, you know, everyone attacks at once, you know, sometimes, mm-hmm. especially when someone repents and says, Hey, I screwed up. I said the wrong thing. I didn't mean it that way or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. so that was yeah. one of the things I, I just said something because I didn't like the tone. You can mm-hmm. question someone and they have to be questions. You have to question everyone on their, yeah, on yeah. their success and what they're doing. But in a respectful tone, say, hey, I want to learn what you're doing instead of saying you're a jerk and you're killing people. Well, that's not true. It's just not yeah, true. Yeah. So I think it's that we get we get into this, you know, I, and I think a lot of it, honestly, behind the scenes, a lot of these people really realize that the more derogatory, the more, you know, what we call Jerry Springer here in the States when they cause conflict, that they yeah. get followers. And so that's yeah. part of the game for them, not necessarily that, yeah. that they're a bad person or anything like that. There's a lot of that yeah. I've seen that I say, yeah. why do you treat people like that? I say, well, I get more followers. Like, I'd rather have yeah. less followers that are decent, cool people that yeah. want positivity, yeah. right? My followers don't go up like those guys, but I'm not yeah. going to fight with people yeah. to make that happen. It ain't going to happen. Yeah, yeah, and Brian, I think the funny thing is a lot of the a lot of the people that appear to be uh, a particular character online are actually quite decent, nice people, but they know that they can get more followers by acting a certain way. So it's almost kind of uh, part of their brand uh, mm-hmm. to be successful. Uh, the ethics around that, I'm not really sure about because I actually think that, you know, based on what I've heard in interviews, um, I think actually people like Lane Norton, for example, he comes across as a really nice guy uh, with a lot of wisdom. I mean, I, I don't know if you know his story, but kind of, you know, he's had a hard time and uh, he's had a really hard time because he, uh, you know, he's, he's had learning difficulties and things like that. So he's had to really work hard to get to where he is today. Um, and there's a lot of wisdom um, in, so I think he, he was on the drive podcast with uh, P- Dr. Peter Otia. And um, that's almost three hours worth of listening. That is, I think, well worth the investment. Uh, because he does have wisdom and he, he does have compassion and empathy. So it, it's really sort of sad in a way to see him kind of online attacking people like yourself or or dr tro or or dr dr jason fung because dr jason fung and yourself and dr unwin so there you have helped 
thousands, if not tens of, tens of thousands of people just like me, because, you know, wind the clock back to August 2019, I was obese, I was pre-diabetic, I didn't really have the energy uh, and, the, and the health and the wellness to enjoy my life. Uh, you know, I had this beautiful, beautiful baby boy who's two and a half now, wonderful wife, uh, but I was so tired. I was so tired. Um, and people you know, don't realize that being tired yeah. and maybe negative and waking up on, you know, not feeling well. And it's hard when you're not feeling well to get going yeah. and you can make all the money in the world. That's what I learned too. It's like, I was working 14 hour days every day and I thought I'm not enjoying this anymore. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working too hard. I enjoy the patient contact, but dealing with insurance companies and getting up at four in the morning and staying until yeah, yeah. eight at night every day. It's just like, man, just to help people and you kill yourself at the same time, you know, physically and emotionally. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, when people start realizing like what you did is you said, okay, something's not right. Let me turn the corner and make some changes. And now look at you, you're out helping other people. That's what it's about. It's really saying, Hey, look, let me figure this out and help you out as much as I can. And you may have a different approach than I do. And it's like, you know, I just gave a talk yeah. called one size fits one, meaning yeah, yeah. what works for you may not work for me. What works for someone else doesn't work. You know, I'm not Sean Baker, even if I'm carnivore. Right. So I think it's one of those things you start looking and saying, okay, can you be vegan and reverse diabetes? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to be a zealot not to say that. So can your faith be yeah. work for you and my faith works for me? Yes, it can. And, and that's what I think is when you start attacking someone else's faith instead of saying, hey, here's what I believe. That's what Dr. Unwin is very good at saying. This is what I believe. This is what I'm yeah. saying. You can say what you want, but here's my patient results. And that's what I really want to bring to the table too. It's like, look, here's the results. And that's what you're bringing to the table also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one other thing, I'm just going to, anonymously well i'm not going to name who this is but sort of low carb you know lifestyle change it's amazing but um it's not just about the science so i said that earlier so what do i mean by that so so this is somebody who's an amazing person very strong person achieved an amazing amount in their life uh, and they're posting as in they know all about so they're, they're, they're saying kind of they reached out in a in a group that I'm a part of saying I know what to do why can't I just do it uh, you know I, I'm on this binge cycle I feel bad I hit all the wrong foods you know I overload on on the on the crappy carbs uh, sorry sorry if I saw that but um, no that's all right on, yeah I control, I, I you know binge, that. binge on the garbage and yeah. why i know what to do i know the science why can't why can't why can't i do it you know and I, i've kind of responded to that message so i i just said you will find a way to thrive as dr jen unwin would say it starts with hope a realistic hope that there is a way for you and that you will find that way um, a couple of resources that have helped me personally with regards to mindset, behavior change, and breaking destructive cycles. Uh, the Atomic Habits book by James Clear um, and The Enlightened Gardener by Sidney Banks. Uh, you already have the solution to all your problems. You already have health and happiness and contentment. It's a case of removing the interference uh, this is not to minimize or trivialize suffering. It is to empower. Um, you can and you will find a way. And, you know, they sort of, they respond to that message. And it's, it's, about, it's about hope because, um, yeah, you, you can know all about intermittent fasting. You know, you can know all about kind of uh, carb restriction and low carb. But even with that knowledge, sometimes people struggle. Sometimes well, struggle. religion, you can read the book all you want. If you don't yeah. put it into application, that's the point. It's like, you know, Paul said that. I know what yeah. I'm supposed to do and I do what I don't want to do, but I can't do what I want to do. And you realize, yeah. And so, and I think that is a, an important part of the equation that many people are missing out. It's not just about what you're eating. It's your stress. It's you know, what you're thinking yeah. about, <laughs> your sleep, yeah. you know, smoking, yes. drinking, all these other yeah. things and exercise yeah. and, and being committed yeah. to, you know, and community, yeah. like what you're building, that's why it's so huge is because what you're doing is building a community where someone said, well, they came off medicine. Why can't I, instead of saying it's impossible. So if yeah. you say it's impossible, if you say hey, you have cancer, there's nothing we do for you where you say, here's our game plan. You know, we, we fought this before and we're getting, here's our, our step-by-step -step process. And so that's what people need is hope and they need encouragement. They need people that care 
that you can't yeah. manufacture that. You could be as smart as you want, but if you don't care, forget it. Does you're not going to impact people. And and so I think that's what people see in you. You say, well, I, I'm not a medical doctor or whatever, but you understand the process. You've been through the process. There's a lot of medical doctors who've never been through the process, so they have no clue, right? They have no clue. They go, just do what I did. Look, I'm yeah. doing fine. You're lying because that's what we all think is that everyone lied to us and they were eating you know cookies all night when they weren't. They were trying their best, you know, and that's yeah. what we have to figure out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, I've got to confess that at, right at the beginning um, of all of this, I, I felt so angry. I felt so angry because why didn't I know this? Um, and why didn't my, my own doctor tell me this? So I felt so kind of betrayed almost. Uh, but I, I'd say I've, I've got over that now. It's, it's been a process. So it's, it's been a process letting go of that. And um now I've, I've actually started reaching out and working with primary care physicians uh, who aren't necessarily familiar with uh, kind of low, low carb or lifestyle change. And hopefully um, in the months and years to come, uh, I can kind of work much more closely with uh, with the, the NHS and primary care physicians to kind of well, help more people, really. Yeah, and I think they can't unsee what they've seen. So once they see it and they try it, they say, wow, that's what happened to me. I started seeing success. I was like, wow, these, you know, I had 11 people come off insulin in six months. And I thought, this is crazy. This is unbelievable to me. Yeah, and when you yeah. see it, then I, I really don't care what other people say. It's like, this is me and my patients, really, ultimately. But I realized that what, the crazy thing I realized is that we had more impact, you know, like obviously reaching you, right, overseas in the UK. And, yeah. you know, I have... You know, I was at a medical conference, a lady came and says, every time I'm on the track, I'm a farmer, every time I'm on the tractor, I listen to you in an intro. And, you know, it's like, wow, that's crazy. Like, I, I, no award in the world is worth that, right? You can give me some kind of whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Hearing people's lives impacted by two knuckleheads sitting around talking about what works for them and what's working for their patients, you know? So I, I think it's amazing. And that's why what you're doing, the reach you're going to have. And I think stepping back to faith for a second is sometimes you say, well, maybe I'm not the right messenger. Maybe it's not the right, but I'm going to take the path. I'm going to do what I'm called to do. And you do it and you have success doing that. It's a, it's a, it's remarkable how that happens. Yeah. 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 And I think that's also something around. Um, if you, if you wait until you feel you're ready to do something, you will never do it because, uh, you know, I wasn't ready to be a father. Um, nobody's ever ready to be, become a parent, uh, but sort of, yeah, I just remember kind of when my son was born, um, I knew that I loved my son because, so I, we were in the, we were in a hospital and, um, you know, I was having skin to skin, skin to skin contact with my son, you know, had my shirt off. So I had this tiny baby in, in my arms and then my wife passed out. She she was unconscious suddenly. And then all these kind of doctors suddenly rushed into the room. Um, so I had this little baby and the woman I love is unconscious and, you know, white as a sheep. And my, fun, my, my son pooed on my, my arm. <laughs> uh, so that was me, you know, with my shirt off, uh, every, you know, everything, you know, loads of things going on. Um, but in that moment, I felt happy. I felt calm. So I thought, I love my son. And, you know, sort of, there are certain things in life you're never going to be ready. You just have to go ahead and take that leap. Mm -hmm. and, and then you get equipped. You get equipped exactly. after you get called sometimes. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And everybody that sort of questions or so everybody that is skeptical about the power of faith um i can guarantee you they have faith too every day because it, it, it takes faith to get into a car and drive it takes faith to get out of bed in the morning because there's all all these things that we takes faith of, to get on an airplane it takes faith exactly. to, yeah like you have faith that your green light and the other people don't have a green light, that they have a red light, yeah. that you're not going to collide. But once the lights are wrong that day, 
right? There's so much we have faith in, we believe because of our past experience and what we've yeah. seen. Like every yeah. time I go through the green light, I look still, right? Just to make sure, the, you know. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so, and I, I think that you, you've raised some really important things of saying, Hey, look, don't be afraid to be questioned on your faith. I, I don't mind respectfully. And you've seen me on Twitter to say, Hey, respectfully, yeah, yeah. we can discuss this. That's cool. But yeah. disrespectfully or, or, you know, criticizing someone else's faith, I never try to do that. You know, yeah. say, Hey, if that gets you through the day, even if I don't believe it, cool, yeah. it works for yeah. you. Cool. Yeah. It's not my thing. Right. And so, and people can say the same to me, but say, Hey, look, not say you're wrong because of what you believe. You say, hey, look, this is what works for me. This is what works for you. Cool. Like Lane Norton and, and Jason Fung or whatever. You know, Tro's approach and my approach. We have different approaches. But yeah. we have a lot in common. So you look at your commonality in life and you go, okay, where do we connect? Just like anything, you could always connect. You could be totally different faiths, different political parties, different everything, but you like the same football team. <laughs> right? Yeah. And your buddies there and you high five each other. Who cares? You're out hiking yeah. together. Who cares what what you know, sexual preference, you have, whatever it is, you know? So I think there's so many things out there where you just like people, I think a lot of it is that we've divided each other against each other. Like most people I yeah. sit down with are reasonable people that you have a nice discussion. They're kind and they want to have, go home to their family, just like you do with your son. I want to go home with my daughters and have fun, you know, and enjoy them. And, you know, I think yeah. you realize in life what really matters. And most of the stuff is a distraction. Yeah. 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 And the thing is, it, it, it comes back to respect, right? Because you can disagree with somebody, but it doesn't have to be disagreeable as such. Because, um, and some wonderful things have happened through people reaching out to other people that they profoundly disagree with. Uh, you know, to, take Dr. Eric Westman. You know, he, he called Dr. Atkins. It's like, okay, where's the evidence? Where's yeah. the evidence? Uh, and he actually took the time to go and, and Dr. Atkins turned around and said, come and see me, talk to me. You know, Dr. Eric Westman went to that clinic and then see how much good that spawned. Um, just having that sort of openness to actually reach out to somebody who has a different view. Yeah, prove it to me, show me, show it to me. Let me, yeah. And that's a, that. that's what I think is that that's why I think the approach of some of these guys like Lane Norton, he's very confrontational and says, you're a jerk. You're trying to, and instead of saying, Hey, how are you doing? What's working? What are your numbers? What, how are things? And, and Dr. Unwin, the same thing. Um, you know, the head endocrinologist calls him and says, what are you doing down there? This is crazy stuff. Right. And yeah. then he said, let's work together. Let's show it. Let's show the data. And then you see that he's having great success. So I, I think it's, you know, being able to, I, I think that's a huge problem in science and in the world is that you're unable to deviate from your view. Because if you come to me and go, hey, Brian, look, here's some extra views. Here's what I'm seeing now, right? I have to look at that. No matter what I believe, what I'm seeing, and at some point yeah. you say, let me look at that and see if it's legit or not. But when they say, well, keto is killing everyone, but they're using soy oil and palm oil and all the rats, you go, well, that's not keto. It's just not what yeah. we're recommending. And having a salmon and vegetables is not eating yeah. palm oil, you know, like that's all you eat. So I think yeah. there's so much of that when you go, okay, like, you know, just try to see it, say, Hey, don't push what I'm getting as don't push an agenda, try to learn and try to be reasonable and try to say, Hey, you know, what works for you? Why is it working? Let's try to figure out maybe there's some component of this that's working. Yeah. You know, you know, all the time we have these discussions, like why I don't care why it's, uh, I do care why, but Ultimately, yeah. if my patient's getting better, I'm going to keep riding that horse as long as I can. If they're getting worse, we got to change horses. Yeah, yeah. And this kind of brings us back, I think, to something really fundamental about science. The observations of the real world that different observers can agree on are more important than the theory, right? Mm -hmm. I think, because, uh, because uh, my... You might disagree of about why it works, but if you if you're open and honest, and you look at real world observations, you can see the clinical results, right? You see people getting well. You, you see people kind of in remission for obesity, diabetes. Their their blood pressure resolves. Uh, they have healthier lipid panels, and kind of their cardiovascular health improves. So you. As you said earlier, you, you can't un once you've seen that you can't unsee it. You might not understand it, or you might disagree with the specifics about. Uh, so, a doctor may say something, or Doctor Jason Fung, or you, you might say something that 
it's not technically scientifically correct uh, but the real world observations and the results are still there so we still know that patients can can get benefit and i guess i guess kind of this is where challenge is important because um being challenged you learn and sort of you can correct a few things that maybe you'd have said that aren't technically correct uh, which um, may detract from people actually following what you say because they think oh they're wrong about this they don't understand because as primary care physicians I mean um, so this is where people like sort of Professor Ben Bickman are, are so valuable as well because uh, they've got the time to devote all day, every day to un really understand in detail. Yeah, and they have integrity. And I, I, Ben's one of my favorite people on earth, right? He, he has integrity, he's brilliant, but yeah. he's a human being and he's kind and he doesn't overstep. He says, look, this is what I think, but we have no data to support this. And he's very clear on that, right? So, you know, I could be loose with my language sometimes because I'll say, well, this is generally how it works, right? But I yeah, think yeah. sometimes you, when you understand the science and you see when the science and the reality, like that's why I love Ben is stuff I use in my practice every day was what he did. And without me using it, it sits there in a book somewhere, right? Yeah. If I don't put it into practice. So he loves that we're putting it into practice and we're seeing benefit. And I love that he's providing us with these so I can sit down with my, every day I talk about Ben Bickman. I talk about, you know, Ben Bikikio, the workout guy. You know, I talk yeah. about a lot of people, yeah. Dr. Unwin, I use his graphs. All the, all these people have contributed something of value that help people. They say, wow. Like when you see the light, you know what I'm talking about? The light goes off and they go, oh, so I don't have to be fatigued and tired. And, and, what, what, and the other big thing is that they miss on this equation when they talk about calories in, calories out. Sure, calories make it. If you eat 10,000 calories every day of butter, you're going to gain weight. It's just, it yeah. does make a difference. But these guys are arguing which one's true, more true. It's like, well, it depends on the person really and, and physiologically where they're at. And I have some people who can eat way more carbs than other people. I can't eat a lot of carbs. I gain weight very quickly. So I know yeah. that. So I can't tell someone else they can't eat carbs if they're a six foot four athlete like Sean Baker, right? So, yeah. you know, so I think at those things, you start realizing it's not one size fits all. And, and I'm telling you, even in the same person I've seen, or they can, they, if they're diabetic and they're out really bad, they can't eat carbs. But once they get in shape and they're like you, now you can get away with carbs that I can't get away with, right? Yeah. So you, it, it's a progression yeah. and it's it, even in the same person. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing that they don't factor in is look, life stress. If someone's going to fail lifestyle change, it's life stress, lack of family support. Those are the yeah. two big ones for sure. I yeah. see it all the time. Yeah. And lack of belief, like when you say like, you know, people beat up on themselves so much, like this, this being kind to yourself decent saying hey you blew it okay what do you learn from that experience move on like all of us should do if we have a bad game you say okay what did i learn you, they watch games films after the games and say okay here's what we did wrong here's what we need to work on here's you did really okay. great here but we had problems here so we're going to work on that for the next game okay then you move forward okay. and do that but uh, yeah. so many people say you blew it you lost a game you're a loser <laughs> right so you know i think it's it, it's that in life giving ourselves some compassion and, and and that same compassion for other people and saying look you know, we have a different approach, but I want to learn from you at least. And we had Lane on and we had a good discussion. You know, yeah. I thought it was positive and, and I, I was really against having him on, to be honest with you. And I fought true oh, on that okay. behind yeah, the scenes because yeah. I, you know, I said, I don't want to have Jerry Springer. I want to have a reasonable debate. And if it's not reasonable, I'll leave and you guys could carry on. Right. Right. Because it's right. not, you know, I'm not going to convince him. He's not going to convince me. We have our approaches, but maybe yeah. something rubs off on me and something. And I learned something from that discussion, right? Yeah. There's things I learned. So I think for right. all of us, there, there's, important life lessons we can learn along the way. That's why I did this podcast because, you know, talking about faith and all that in, in that setting, it just wasn't appropriate. And that's why having guys like you say, look, I lean on my faith. Here's what I do in my family. Look, my wife and I have different faiths and we make it work. It can work. We don't have to be at war with each other. We don't have to like, yeah. look at our differences. You say, okay, cool. Like, I don't think about it again. Like someone else is a different, I, I go, look, this is a nice person. There's a lot of Christians that I don't like personally, right? Yeah, They're yeah, not a yeah, nice person. Yeah. They say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but look at, look at, you're, you're, you're hurting your cause. And if, if I say I'm low carb and keto and then I'm not eating donuts every day, you go, well, Brian, like, what do you believe, right? What, what are you doing? So I think we have a response. Once we take a stand, I think we, then we have, even have more responsibility than someone who doesn't take a stand because they could do whatever they want, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so going back to something oh, you yeah. said, some people are so hard on themselves they're so hard on themselves because they, they think that I have to do this perfectly. And then 
they can't do it because nobody can nobody's perfect so they can't do it perfectly and uh whereas somebody who has kind of has faith or support they might be able to rally around and think okay all right i, I blew it this lunchtime I, I kind of had half a pack of biscuits or some cake or whatever uh, i'm just going to get right back on it right now you know yeah clean the plate and just move on whereas other people um they are so hard on themselves and they, they keep don't doing it that. keep doing it keep doing it exactly yeah, yeah. they don't have that Absolutely. self-forgiveness and yeah exactly that's important yeah. self-forgiveness and forgiving others say okay you said a dumb thing okay you're an okay guy it's all right yeah. you know not a big deal so i think it's like it's that being able to humble yourself and go yeah i did say that because some people just they make the wrong statement they just keep doubling down doubling down and it's it gets worse instead of saying yeah you know i want to step that one back i i messed up okay like yeah. no one's going to argue with that point right so for you what have you learned man what are your life lessons you're going to teach me man uh, in life what are some important life lessons that you can give to to, to me and my listeners here that you've wow. learned along the way of what matters what's important what what doesn't matter you yeah know? yeah yeah so i think i think the most important thing is sort of just realizing that sort of you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do things perfectly. Um, there's people, if you're, if you have the humility to understand that you're in trouble, you know, you're, you know, I was in trouble because, uh, when I was pre-diabetic and obese, I didn't have the first clue what to do. Uh, but if you have, if you have the willingness to admit that you, that you need help and you ask for help, the help is there. And there's so many people who um, have given so much time to help me uh, because I, I joined Dr. Jason Fung's free Facebook group and the amount of support I got from complete strangers because I knew, um, so I, I sort of when I started fasting, I didn't know what I was doing. I had, didn't have the first clue. But I knew that any time of the day or night, if I posted something saying I'm, I'm really struggling, somebody would respond. Yeah. So, and it was strangers, complete strangers were helping me just out of the goodness of their own heart for free. So yeah. if, if that's anything I've learned is cynicism is lazy cynicism is lazy people are amazing people are amazing and, and they will they will help you just out of the goodness of their own heart um yeah sorry getting a bit bit emotional just thinking back to how it was you know yeah that's real man that's important you know, my dog died and I had tons of people being kind and decent and saying nice things. It's like, oh, yeah, I lost my dog, too. And it was hard. And yeah. Just hearing that to know you're not the only one alone going through this, you know, like the, you, in your experience, having complete strangers say, how can I help you? Right. Yeah. It's cool. Jason Fung did that to me. That's why, I have a, you know, when I was starting out, I didn't know anything. And he's like, OK, Brian, here's what it is. Here you go, doc. Because he knew once other doctors got on board, then it would it would help his cause, too. Right. But he cares about people. And that, yeah. the, you know, you can't fake that and yeah. you care about people and, the, and you can't fake that. So you're, you're paying it forward. This is what we should be doing. Exactly. You are the example of saying, okay, I benefit from this. Let me try to help other people who want to do this journey. And that's why you're called to this mission that you're on and yeah. you're saving lives and you're helping two people come off medicines and other people will follow. So it's just, it's just staying, staying the course in one step at a time, really in life, you know? Yeah. So, so if that's anything, any one thing I could pick is, don't be cynical because quite often uh, that cynicism is just a way of people protecting themselves because I think with with health problems you can have something which you're very familiar with this like learnt helplessness mm -hmm. so there's so many people who've just tried everything uh, you know every diet under the sun and failed over and over over again and they've failed so many times that they don't really have the courage to hope again. So, yeah. So if there's any one thing, it's don't give up hope. 
Amen, man. Amen. That's that's uh, that that's the truth. Don't give up hope. Don't give up the faith. You know, stay strong. Keep taking a step. Just don't give up. Just don't give up. Because by the time someone's gotten to me, they've given up because they've they've hit. They, but they're taking the step. They go, "I'll give you one more chance. This is it, right?" Because they've failed everything. And when you fail everything, it's really hard. It's hard. You you start to be a victim, and people don't believe anymore. They don't believe they can do it. You know, and so I think when you believe you can accomplish great things, when you think, oh, it's never going to work, it's going to be terrible, my life's going to be terrible, and you're a bad person, then you believe that. If you believe the world's a terrible place, yeah, you, you know, there's great people. I've been to the worst place in the world. And I've seen the greatest people, right? Look yeah. at my two friends from Sri Lanka now, like doing huge things to help people and be kind and decent and, and appreciating what you got too. And I think that's another part of the, the puzzle too, is being appreciative of what you got, not what you don't have, upset about what you don't have, you know, so... Hey, man, it's been an absolute, absolute pleasure. You, you joined me from holiday your first day. Enjoy your week off. And, man, it, I'm so glad we got to connect here. And I know you're going to be doing a lot more stuff, you know, a lot talking a lot more and, and getting out there on podcasts and, and uh, impacting people. So if people want to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you and how do they track you down? So I'm on Twitter. So I'm, I think on Twitter, I'm at Iranda W1. Uh, I'm on in Instagram as well. I'm on Facebook. So, yeah, please reach out, to, especially somebody who has type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes or if you're suffering from obesity. Um, you know, I have helped people and I know the resources that you'll need. I can kind of connect people with, with a lot of free resources that are out there, including kind of Dr. Jason Fung's kind of free kind of Facebook group. Um, yeah, just reach out. All right. Hey, Rhonda, thanks so much, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for all your positivity, everything you're doing. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And hey, everyone, thanks for your support. Thanks for listening. This is great stuff. I know you're going to play this one back a couple of times. There's a lot of wisdom here and a lot of important messages. Uh, you may not catch it the first time. So Rhonda, man, have a great holiday. And thank you so much for, for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Brian. Hey everyone, I wanted to let you know about an upcoming conference that really had a huge impact on me. That's helped me on my journey and helped me to really uh, understand metabolic health and, and what we're doing to make people healthier. And so I have my friend, Doug Reynolds, who's the boss who's putting on this conference. So Doug, tell us about the conference that's coming up, Low Carb USA, San Diego. I love it because it's right next to my house and I get it sleep in my own bed and come, but maybe I get to stay in a hotel this time. I don't know. And I get to speak. So man, it's awesome that we get to all meet up together and, and build community. We, we all know how important that is. So Doug, welcome. Tell people about what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, thanks, Brian. It, it, you know, it's, um, it's really exciting to be, to be able to do it, do it in person again. I, I, I think there's so many people out there that are, are just clamoring to, to be able to, talk to people again and give someone a hug and, and, and just collaborate like, like, you know, has become so predominant in all the, in all the other events that we've done before this COVID thing hit. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, uh, that's come up since co when COVID hit, we, you know, we, we couldn't do it. So then we did, we flipped over and did virtual versions of the San Diego event and the Boca one. Um, and we had a, a lot of people actually sign up and, and become a part of that. And so what it has done for us now is, is make us understand that the live stream component is, can be very effective for people that can't make it to the event. So um, this, is, this is a proper live event. And I think I want to make this very clear to people that I think they think it's like that so many people have asked how many, you know, how many of, the, of, of the talks are going to be virtual and how many are going to be in person. And the answer is every single one is going to be in person. So we will have a live stream component. People will, will be able to access it via live stream, but all the speakers will be there in person. Um, anybody that hasn't been able to make it obviously just hasn't made it into the lineup. Um, and I think that's, that's really important and it's really exciting that we've got all of these people coming out um, and some really good, good, good names, you know, um, Gary Tarbs has been a stalwart with us. He's like always supported us. The first guy to say, you know, uh, we, let, let's do this. Um, you obviously, Rob Cybers, Tro, Tony Hampton, Brett Scher, Dr. Ben, Amy Berger, Diana Rogers. I'm really excited that she's, you know, on the sustainability side. She's, um, I'm really excited that she's able to make it this time. 
we've been trying to get her to an event of ours for a while. And this is the first time. Andrea Salcido is a really, really amazing. Uh, she did uh, one of the Grand Rounds talks for our SMHP. Um, and she's a gynecologist. We've had a lot of comments from, from people from the feedback forms and stuff saying that you should get a gynecologist. And so now we have. You know. Michelle Hearn was a, 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 a potentially Olympic athlete who just like crashed and burned on, um, on carbs. And she's a dietitian and she found keto and eventually basically carnival. And it's, it's cured her to the extent where she's training for the Olympics again. But she wrote this book called uh, Dietitian's Dilemma because you know everything that she'd learned as a dietitian, she wasn't doing anymore in order to make herself healthy again. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really cool to, to have you know, a, a real dietitian's perspective of, of their, the problems that they have. She's basically left that, that uh, vocation because she, she just couldn't function in, in, um, in the hospital environment and that where she was. She couldn't, she was not allowed to speak to people about low carb. Um, and so that's a fascinating story. story. Uh, Dr. Gapriet uh, Pada, I think you you might have even had him on. on yeah, uh, yeah, he's doing amazing stuff with pain yeah, management. He's just one of the most, community. the most incredible people. Yeah, it's, it's, amazing. Um, um, Marco Cazella, uh, is, uh, I don't think you know. He's a legend. At least in this one. Yeah, yeah he he's a legend. A, I, yeah. I worked with him in in uh, deep prescribing uh, the textbook chapter, and he's yeah. he's phenomenal. And he he's a, he's struggled with metabolic disease, even though he's a long distance runner and he was able to get soda out of the hospitals that he's affiliated with. And that's a, that's a huge task. Yeah. That's a huge, huge money maker. So yeah, so many great people. And I think the big thing is just being able to sit down. I know uh, for me being at low carb USA, the first time I was able to sit down and have a cup of coffee with some great leaders that were just there and they just are there to talk. And so yeah. there's so much great information. Uh, anyone else we, we need to talk about Doug? Um well, uh, Steve Finney has been the, is the latest uh, addition to the lineup. i um, been chatting with him for a while now, managed to get him on board. Dave Feldman as well. He wasn't sure if he was going to be able to talk because of, of this research that he's got going on that he might not have been able to actually speak in public. Um, Arthur Agatston, I think, is going to be fascinating. I did a podcast interview with him the other day. Um, he, I, I didn't even know until very recently, but he's the guy that that discovered or, or defined the, the, the calcium score. It's actually known as his Agustin name. Score. Yeah. Yeah. And the South Beach diet. He's done so much Correct. work. I mean, he's, he's always trying to make people healthy. He's doing a lot. Yeah. So yeah, it's just great. The amount, the, the amount of talent you pulled in, you know, uh, and it, you've it's got amazing. the whole, you know, for those people that know about the SMHP, which is kind of the other hat that I put on the other organization that I, that I run, um, that nonprofit, pretty much the entire, um, board of directors for that is going to be at this event, either speaking or, or at least present. Um, and then, you know, the other committees, we've got the, the panel of advisors for the clinical guidelines. You're, you're on that panel. Um, it's just, there, there are so many, it's just going to be so many fascinating conversations that are going to go on um, over that weekend. Um, I can't wait. Yeah. And it's just, and you're also bringing a lot of vendors like Keto Mojo is always there and a lot of, a lot of good people. Yeah. And so, try different products and, and, uh, you know, there's some great, uh, restore program who's doing some great work through, through your program and really getting it out to the masses. There's so many great people coming out. So I would highly recommend it. And I worked out a deal with Doug cause I want people that, you know, sometimes finances is a, is a issue for people. So I said, Doug, look, my people need a discount. Our people need a discount. So what do you work out for us, Doug? So, yeah, we, um, we've got it. Uh, if you use the code low carb MD, um, it gives you 20% off every, and, and it's not just the ticket for those, for those people that sign up for the dinners, for those people that, that require a CME certificate, whatever they add, whatever their purchase is, the total amount, um, that 20% comes off that total. In the past, when we gave discounts, it came just off the ticket price. Um, but, uh, it's actually it's not that great a guy. It's actually just that it's, it's easier for me to manage. <laughs> 
um, to take it off the total. But, but uh, yeah, as that's a result, that's, as a result that's, everyone that's else great. Scores, right? So that helps too. And then is that for people who come in person and online also? Correct. Yeah. Right. So whatever whatever is in your your cart, basically, um, that uh, that discount comes off off the uh, off the total. And the other thing is one of the options and the upgrade options. So if you only buy the ticket now, you can buy, you can upgrade and buy uh, the VIP dinners later if you want to join us. Um, or you can, even, if you if you signed up for the live stream and you wanted to upgrade to in-person because now you realize, hey, everybody's traveling and actually I think I can do this. Um, then you can still use that code um, on your up upgrade options as well. So you can still get 20% off uh, if you decide later. So if you buy the live stream and later, you know, in the beginning of August, you decide you want to actually come in person, um, you can utilize that code again then for the upgrades and, and they will apply, which doesn't happen for, for anybody else. So, And what are the uh, dates? 26th to 29th of August. Awesome. And it'll be live. And, and if you want to stay in your hotel, I think, can you live stream it from your computer wherever you're at yeah so so that's the thing is uh it didn't used to be like that either but you know i think I, every time we do this we, we improve it so now uh somebody that's that's uh, in person has access to the live stream as well so if they um if they want to watch part of it and you know in, in their room or something they can we would really prefer that they come down and and you know sit and sit in the audience but if for some reason that that's not possible, they can watch it or they miss something. They can go and watch, they can go back and watch that evening or something. They can, you know, watch a talk that they missed or something like that. Um, yeah, and then they get great. access, they get yeah. access to uh, those recordings after the event. And then within about two weeks, we normally are able to get all the individual videos of the talks populated on that site as well. And, and they have access to that forever so yeah it's um, gr great education i think being able to because even being there i've had times where i want to interview someone or just spend time with someone because they're coming from south africa or something and i miss a talk and i was like oh shoot i want to see that one and and so it really does free you up to say okay i'll, I'll get yeah, hybrid you can sit and, and and go down you can talk to people you can you know watch it later that night or on the weekend because a lot of us are really busy so that that is outstanding i'm really glad that's a huge huge improvement for sure and uh you know and some of those talks you're going to want to watch it a couple times to make sure you absorb it all so you don't have to feel like you have to take notes and doug hates people taking pictures in the meetings and because it's distracting you know, for people behind them so you can you'll have access to the talk the the powerpoints and all that kind of stuff so i, I think that's really huge so sure. hey everyone Thank you. I think this is a huge thing. I, I, the reason I had Doug on, we have no financial interests. Uh, you know, it's really just because I know the benefit of, of this and how it can help people trying to live a better life and, and getting on track. And I know it helped me immensely and changed the course of my life, really. So, Doug, thanks for all you're doing and continue to do. And, and you're making a massive impact. So, Low Carb USA San Diego, I, I would highly recommend everyone come out. I appreciate that, uh, Brian. And thank you for what you're doing. I mean, it all started at, at uh, one of our meetings many years ago, um, but I'm so glad that you made it to that meeting because you're doing great things now too. Thank you. Hey, I get some good South African food out of it sometimes, so it's all <laughs> it's all good. So, hey, everyone, hey, thank you for listening and, and thank you for your continued support. Thank you for listening to this episode. We greatly appreciate your support. We would greatly appreciate a positive thumbs up on all of the platforms like uh, iTunes and uh, Spotify or wherever you're listening. And we just thank you for our Patreon supporters. Uh, we greatly appreciate yeah, your help in getting this message out. We think there's a lot of important information. And uh, hopefully this helps you. You know, Have a great day and thank you for listening and thank you for your support.